Welcome. Welcome back to another True Crime Saturday. Still having a few technical issues I'm dealing with right now, and uh, hopefully uh, my voice isn't being uh, too terribly masked by any background noise or anything like this. Or I'm, I'm even hoping the mic actually is able to capture the audio for you guys. Uh, I'm gonna listen later, and if once again, if you guys, if you guys are seeing anything, please let me know in the um, in the chat and I will see what I can do to fix it. There's not much I can do right now, um, but I'm hoping to get this stuff fixed tomorrow, uh, between at least tomorrow and next Saturday. So uh, if there's any issues though, I am gonna be doing um, a restream. This is not probably gonna be a case that we're gonna need to re-up on uh, because most of the stuff is pretty well laid out, um, regardless what some of these uh, publications out there are saying. Um, I do believe this is, it's not necessarily cut and dry, but um, this case is, it is definitely odd. And there's some uh, disturbing details about it, but it's for the most part pretty cut and dry. Um, there's gonna be a pattern um, in the next few uh, cases we're gonna be looking at also that I wanna go and cover. This in particular, because I've been seeing a rise in this, and it's kind of disturbing. So, I'll get into that in just a second. But essentially, this family here had gone missing in October 2009. And they were later uh, discovered in on December, or not December, but uh, November 17th, I think it was 16th and 17th is when, uh, when the bodies would be discovered of this family. The thing is, this family just went missing from their home. They had, they had literally left with their truck filled with their belongings and things like this. We don't know how much the truck was full, but it definitely had some stuff, such as $32,000 in cash. So the family wasn't super strapped, but they were, they were kind of, you know, not necessarily paycheck to paycheck, but saving money would have been little difficult from what uh, all the reports have stated. Um, I'm not finding a whole lot of details, so this is something I'll probably have to FOIA a little bit. So, bear with me. Uh, but, if I do end up making another stream on this, it will be because I had to FOIA some information. I'm going to continue to look at this because it is going to be unsolved, and by the end of this stream you'll see exactly why. But, the family disappeared. Um, Bobby, Sherilyn, and Madison, Jameson all went missing. Um, and the thing is, their truck was found in the middle of a remote area um, over in Latimer County in Oklahoma. Foul play is suspected, but as for suspects, there's none currently. I do have a sneaking suspicion about some things. I'm not going to say anything with my thoughts on it quite yet. Like I said, uh, because I can't, there's nothing to really truly link it. And that's the part that kind of sucks here. So, um, that being said, let's get right in and, uh, So, on October 8th, the family was last seen on this day, but due to the family's privacy, nobody actually knew uh, they were missing until sometime after. Uh, between October 16th and 17th of 2009, um, the Jameson family truck was discovered in a remote area in Latimer County. It was reported to the sheriff's office twice. Now, this is going to be very, very relevant here because this remote area, there's woods, or, woods surrounding it, but... This is an area where people would just go and shoot at this car that was just there. It was just this wide open area. <clears throat> um, it, I mean, this is just a small town that would go there too. Hunters, that was a common thing. People would go hunting in this area. That's why it was kind of weird when people saw this, but once again, it's they see the truck there. 
somebody's out hunting. This is kind of somewhat typical, but a couple days go by, truck's still there. There's some cause for alarm. Um, but on, no on November 17, 2013, hunters had discovered the remains near Smokestack Hollow, which you can see on the map on the far right of the board. Um, Smokestack Hollow is it's not too far away from um, the Jameson family remains. But uh, the sheriff's office claims that the bodies had suffered massive predation and weathering, um, which they believe explains the whole found in Bobby Jameson's skull. However, the hunters are still claiming to this day that the hole was actually caused from a bullet. Now, are we going to go and take the word of small, small town police officers? We probably don't see a whole lot of uh, bullet wounds or, you know, gun death, right? We don't, we don't, they probably don't see a whole lot. Now I'd have to go and double check on that, but I suspect they don't have a great deal over in that area during that time, especially. And hunters, well, you're hunting deer, you're hunting bear, you're hunting cougar, whatever you're hunting. Chances are you're going to know what these things look like, especially if you're firing with firearms, right? With rifles, things like that. You're going to see wound on these animals that killed them, right? So you're going to be able to kind of have some kind of a, a grasp, a pretty, I would actually argue, a pretty good grasp on what it's going to look like for a bullet wound. But the thing is, the truck was left there with a GPS unit. Um, the handgun was gone, which was known to be in the truck. Um, we know that their cell phones were found, but there was all sorts of stuff that was just lost. Uh, it was just kind of, some of the stuff was just weird that was there. Uh, the vehicle, um, it looked like they had just basically, the family had gotten out. Um, it was somebody they knew. There was no sign of a struggle or anything like this. But uh, the truck was just left like this. So when it was searched and all this, it, it was more alarming to find $32,000 underneath the driver's seat. Well, now you guys can see that... Um, the video recorder footage over there very far right over there ignore the timestamp a lot of the times when you get these um, you get these cameras and all this there's like for instance with me and myself um, if I'm recording film and all this I don't always adjust the date and chat in fact more often than not I don't um, so it just basically goes back to the manufacturer's date I think is what it's called um, this could have been just the case with this but this was um, this was even told by the police that this is actual footage uh, during this time. Um, and they can go and confirm all this. So we do know that this was during October 8th or 9th or so, uh, 2009. And we know that they were packing their truck and they were almost like a trance-like state. Uh, some even consider it a, a zombie-like state where they're just kind of just back and forth, back and forth. And there's even times where they're not even carrying anything. If you watch the footage, there's times neither of them are carrying anything to the truck. And they go back there, and then they come back in the house. It's a little peculiar. Uh, several people, including the Jamesons, their families and friends, have claimed that the Jameson residence was haunted, uh, possibly even um, uh, infested by demonic entities. This is the part I wanted to go and say, state that this is something we've been seeing on the rise. Uh, we got to see this with the David Crowley case, with even the family even stating there was something in the home. Um, you know, there's several cases this, is, this has occurred where a demonic presence or some kind of a dark spirit was in the home and what ends up happening, um, there's disturbances. And through fear, what happens, it weakens um, basically a family's uh, capability to fight it off. And um, what ends up happening is possessions and things like this can occur. However, like I said, there's no exact science on it at the time. At this time, there is not an exact science. I'm actually looking at it. I've been looking at it for a few years now. I do, I do find some similarities uh, with the engagement of fear on the human body and what it does. Um, you can look at all sorts of different factors that it does affect. So not only are it, you know, once again, you're going to have a fight or flight response. You're going to have adrenaline pumping. Um, you know, and there, there's just all sorts of different factors that get into it that basically you can show there's some science behind it, why fear is actually part of the reason things happen. 
uh, your body actually stops working at its best when you're under certain um, duress, certain kinds of um, uh, stimuli. Like fear is one of the big ones where all of a sudden your body doesn't fight things off quite like it should. Um, I'm not necessarily linking it to immune response issues, but with possession, what would we be looking at, right? You have to go and look at what exactly would be chemically um, going through a possession. And I haven't got enough data on that to really state anything on it, but I do have some suspicions that it does, does affect the body chemically. And that's why I have stated I, there's not enough evidence to show chemically, but we see changes that the body undergoes through possession. If something were to come into your body, you need to have something there to actually be able to move it. Therefore, even just like the soul, um, there's a chemical composition to it, I'm sure. But end of the day, um, there's something to it. Just we don't have any exact science to explain what it is. But it's a similar thing, I believe, as the soul. All right. Um, but the really creepy part about this is also that... Uh, the local pastor um, had known about this as well, and had actually uh, been requested to exercise the residents. And uh, Bobby even came in asking the pastor for uh, special bullets to kill spirits that he claimed were living in his attic. Now this is relevant because now we're seeing an attic. This is a typical thing we're seeing, which from what I've been gathering, that seems more like a demonic presence in the home, uh, which would add into these trance-like states Kind of just being machine, you know, machine operated essentially. People are just machines that are using it. And then that's the thing you look at it as the body operate just like a machine. Uh, it's the same principle in my book. I do think that if there was something in the home, living in the attic, now we're looking at demonic entities, which now we have to be looking at also other factors because what allows a demon in? I'm not going to get into it too much, but I know fear is one of the biggest factors for it. Um, people fear this. Um, that's why we, we always refer back to the seven deadly sins, right? Uh, we have pride, lust, gluttony, sloth, um, envy, Excuse me, pride. gluttony, sloth, envy, lust, wrath, and um, greed. That's what it was. And the thing is, you look at it, fear itself does fall into these things. Because now you've got you've got pridefulness. You're going to have typically what you generally see in a small family home like this. Um, not always, but the case is. I mean, typically, I'm just I'm just kind of just just kind of putting a cover over this whole thing and just saying this is kind of a blanket statement here. Um, typically, you get the, the females in the home and the children in the home are typically going to go and um, look to the male to defend the home. Typically, this is the general main role for the home is to defend the home. So you're going to have this, you're going to have not only fear here, which is going to go 